Hi everyone, let's talk books. Actually, today I want to talk about audiobooks. I can't remember if I have, um, I can't remember if I've hauled these or not. I'm pretty sure I haven't hauled um, most of these, but these are books that I've acquired, not recently actually, I've acquired probably in the last six months maybe um but i am about to start having really long commutes again for like the last three months i haven't had long commutes uh, but i'm about to start driving um a lot monday through friday i'm gonna have long commutes so this is where audiobooks come into play um and i discovered them when i started doing um these long commutes and my goodness like the radio was really great at first. I my favorite thing to do while driving is listening to music in Spanish. That's kind of my Spanish music time. But I'm bored with it. Like I just got bored with it so quickly because they play the same songs over and over again. And then some of the radio personalities got on my nerves. So I transitioned into audiobooks, which was really unexpected for me. Usually I hate listening to like NPR or to people like talking to me on the radio. Like when the radio personalities come on, I usually change it because like I just have this aversion to people talking to me while I drive. So audiobooks are a big surprise. But what I found was that I end up knowing the commute so well that I need the kind of mental stimulation that the audiobooks can, can give you. Um, I know I should probably try podcasts as well. I haven't yet tried podcasts, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it all um, in the next um, few months. Uh, but let me talk to you about some of the audiobooks that I currently have and that I'm about to stick in my car for these long commutes. So the first two that I want to talk about were books that uh, were loaned to me by my boyfriend's dad. He is huge into audiobooks and has a pretty good collection of them. Um, so whenever we see him, I give him a list of the audiobooks I want to borrow. And um, so right now, the books that I have from him are Nelson DeMille's The Gate House. I don't remember anything about this book. Um, let's see, it says, after John Sutter's aristocratic wife killed her mafia Don lover, John left America and set out in his sailboat on a three-year journey around the world, eventually setting, settling in London. Now, ten years later, he has come home to the Gold Coast of Long Island. That stretch, that stretch of land that once held the greatest concentration of wealth and power in America to attend the imminent funeral of an old family servant. Okay, there's a lot more description in the back. I think that's all I need to know. Um, let's see, it's narrated by Christian Rommel. I don't think I've heard any of his narrations, um, but this is a long audiobook, like a lot. And it does in include um, an interview with the author. Um, so I like it. I like long, long books uh, for my commute. And um, yeah, this one sounds interesting enough. Uh, the thing about audiobooks for me is that I like kind of silly books for um, my commute. Just things that I don't need to pay a ton of attention to, like books that will give me some mental stimulation but not too much, right? Because if an uh, audiobook requires a lot of concentration, like if I'm following an intricate story, then I feel like um, w there are moments that I, I just, I can't be paying attention to the audiobook because I need to be paying attention to traffic. Like I'm driving in LA, like there's a lot of really bad drivers here and um, I need to be able to pay, put most of my attention into traffic. Anyway, that sounds fine. That sounds like a book that I will be able to handle. Next up, though, is Ken Follett's World Without End. Unabridged, 36 CDs. I wonder how long it's going to take me to go through this one. So again, I don't remember anything from this one. I, I looked at the descriptions real quick before I asked um, my boyfriend's dad for these books. Um, so let me take a quick look then back here. It says, the most highly anticipated novel of the year, blah, blah, blah. In 1989, Ken Follett astonished the literary world with the pillars of the earth. All right, that doesn't tell me much. I think this is just a, a one. On the day after Halloween in the year 1327, four children slip away from the cathedral city of Kingsbridge. They are a thief, a bully, a boy genius, and a girl who wants to be a doctor. In the forest, they see two men killed. 
it's long ass audiobook. That was what attracted me. Why this is why I picked this book out from um, the audiobook library. It is amazing how long. Um, and I'm kind of interested to see how long it's going to take me to get through it because uh, of all the driving I'm going to be doing. Maybe it'll just take me a few days. <laughs> This one will take me absolutely no time to get through. This is Lillian Jackson Brown's The Cat Who Went Bananas. And um, it's narrated by George Guidal. I love The Cat Who books. I used to devour them. I uh, would check every store we walked into for more Cat Who books uh, when I was younger. And I haven't reread them or gone or back to them um, in so many years. But when I saw this at my used bookstore, I thought it would be perfect um, and uh, as long as the narration is good I, I feel like this is going to be really really great. So if you don't know the Cat Who Books follows uh, this um, former writer, retired writer, um, Jim Quill Quillerin and he moves into this little town. Um, where in the country is this? I forgot where in the country this is. But this little town um, that is super quirky and where everybody knows everyone and it's also all up in everybody's business. Um, but uh, he adopts these two cats and it turns out one of the cats is super, um, super smart. What was the cat's name? Was it Coco? Coco I think is the name name of the cat um, and he basically helps the writer solve murders it sounds a little ridiculous it's really great I just I have really fond memories of reading these books so that'll be like a uh, comfort food for me all right next up is John Grisham's playing for pizza so um, I don't know much about this one in particular either uh, but it was recommended to me by um, one of my book club members when I mentioned to her that I had gone on a John Grisham like binge um, I read um, what, was it, what was the book I read I think it's called The Invisible Man um, it was his only uh, nonfiction book and she suggested that I should try uh, playing for pizza because it's one of his few like non-lawyer books. This one is about a baseball player. Uh, is it baseball player? No, NFL. That's not baseball. <laughs> That's American football. All right, it's about a sports guy. Um, so um, we'll see. I have, I like John Grisham. Um, but um, it's nothing too deep, nothing like that, so we'll see about this one. All right, next up, I picked up a Stephen King book. This is Everything's Eventual, and it's three different um, short stories. It is, let's see, do we get the names back here? It's Everything's Eventual, Autopsy Room 4, uh, The Little Sisters of Illuria, and Lucky Quarter, oh, and The Road Virus Heads North. I haven't read a ton of Stephen King. In fact, have I read anything by Stephen King? I don't think I have. Um, but he's an author that I've really been meaning to try for some time. I have some of his physical books. Uh, like I re really want to read Salem's Lot and The Stand. But I also thought maybe the short stories, like listening to them, would be a good way um, to get into um, him. So... I picked it up at my used bookstore, so th these aren't new CDs or anything like that, um, but that's that's fine with me. Lastly, another book I picked up at the used bookstore is, and it's got some plastic around it, but it's this um, book called Evermore by Alison Noel, and it looks like it's the first in a series. It says The Immortals, but it looks like that's the name of the series. I don't know what this one is about either. Let's see. The first book in Alice and Noel's Extraordinary New Immortal series. Enter an enchanting new world where true love never dies. After a horrible accident claims the lives of her family, 16-year-old Everbloom can see people's auras, hear their thoughts, and know someone's entire life story by touching them. Going out of her way to avoid human contact and suppress her abilities, she has been branded a freak at her new high school. But everything changes when she meets Damon August. Damon is gorgeous, exotic, and wealthy. He's the only one who can silence the noise and random energy in her head. Wielding a magic so intense, it's as though he can peer through straight into her soul. As ever is drawn deeper into his enticing world of secrets and mystery, she's left with more questions than answers, and she has no idea just who he really is or what he is. 
The only thing she knows to be true is that she's falling deeply and helplessly in love. Well, that sounds like he's a vampire, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, it didn't sound too deep. So that was a plus for me. And it was pretty cheap. How much did it cost me? Uh, all right, not too bad. And um, yeah, it's silly, which is just what I need for my commutes to keep me from, you know, or to, to keep my road rage in check. Because if you drive in LA, you kinda, you experience road rage at some point. <laughs> and I'll be in it every day of the week. So, wish me luck. Also, if you have audiobooks that you'd like to recommend, because I know um, there are books that are sometimes better in audio, usually because of some, the, the narrator, right? Uh, but if you have books that you just really, really recommend on audio, let me know because I'm also going to be getting a subscription for Audible. And so I'm gonna be um, downloading um, books off of there so that I have uh, a selection of things to choose from. But this will keep me busy for a while, so I'm gonna be sticking all this in my uh, car and then as I listen to some of these books, I'll come back and check in, uh, let you know uh, how it goes and what I thought. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.